Hi guys, it's Claris. Welcome to our Sunday Live. Today is June 5th. And um, yeah, today we're I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. We are we are going to be well, I have a watercolor in the vineyard event today at uh, Good Earth Niagara. And so I figured we're gonna paint together and uh, go from there. We're gonna paint together what I'm going to be demonstrating live in the vineyard this evening. Okay, so you guys are gonna join me so I can have a reference for everybody attending. Hi, Patty, good morning. Hi, Leah. Okay, so I wanna just make sure everyone gets in or has a little bit of time getting in. Hi, Jill, you made it, yay! I know Jill messaged me and said she might not make it. But, okay, let's get started. I am going to give my quick spiel of the Hello Karisti Challenge or the May Challenge has ended officially. Uh, winners for that will be announced next week. And uh, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me, right? Just making sure you guys can hear me. Um... Let me know in the comments, because I know sometimes there's been a couple of times where you guys were not able to hear me, and so I just want to be extra, extra sure that that is not an issue today. Oh, perfect. Fabulous. That is what I want to hear. No issue Sunday. That's what I'm aiming for today. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's ended. May, May challenge has ended, however... You can always take the challenge at your own leisure, so feel free to check that out. Um, this month is June, and we're going to be focusing in on florals that have multiple colors in their petals. And so, again, trying to sort of ease into the whole habit of loose painting. These are, these are things that are just going to have to come to you naturally once you learn the technique and once you do it repeatedly over and over again. So we will also be revisiting... March's video on the little um, filler florals. So we'll be teaming that on a smaller scale with our dogwood, which is what we're gonna be focusing on, on as our model for um, these techniques. So it is June 24th, link is up, find it, sign up, and I will see you there. So I'm gonna put this aside and let us talk about what we're painting today. So, let you know my brushes in a minute but to begin with most of the people in attendance uh, at the vineyard are coming because they want to have some fun and they have probably most of them never tried watercolor before so I'm going to we're gonna do because you're joining me today we're gonna do something that involves a beautiful sky because we're gonna make it a nice, beautiful, bright sky. I've got super light here and a bright one here. And we're gonna do silhouettes of trees with maybe, I'm gonna add like a distant mountain in the back. And then I definitely wanna accommodate to have a moon happening somewhere there. So that's what I'm gonna do. The cactus, I'm gonna leave for another watercolor in the event happening throughout the summer there's several happening so we'll do this for today so join me it's got super island vibes and summer vibes and here we go let's begin i am going to walk through my supplies um and then i'm going to read your comments now this is a sheet that i have i don't know what size it is because i ended up cutting it at some point uh in the past but i believe it's from I think it's Arches, 100% hot press. Hot press is, yes, hot press, hot, because it's smooth. And uh, obviously I am using White Knights, my favorite. I think next Sunday Live, I will be swatching or using the uh, new Paul Rubens. So you guys can stay tuned for that. So I'm going to keep this aside here. And then I've got water handy. Now, we're typically going to be using one brush at the vineyard. 
Um, because again, people are just starting out. It might be a little bit too intense to have too many. So I like to introduce just the one so that they get comfortable mixing and all that good stuff. So I will, just because I don't want to prolong this too, too, too long, I'm going to be using my Zen number 10. But I'm also going to be keeping my Quill Princeton number 4 handy just in case, just so it's quicker for me to like get across and lay down the water. And then we'll also be using the 10 to create the detail with the, um, with the coconut trees and stuff, okay? All right, so let's get to mixing. I am going to use uh, the palette that comes with with St. Petersburg here, and uh, I just want to make sure everyone is still on here. Yeah, everyone's still here good because I'm getting an error message saying YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Are you guys experiencing buffering by any chance? Let me know in the comments. Thanks, Jill. Hi, Lily. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for popping in. Okay, no buffering. Okay, that's good because I don't know why I'm getting this message. I hope my kids are not watching Netflix while I am doing this because that's the rule in my house. When I'm doing a Sunday Live with you guys, my kids are not allowed to go online just in case. Um... Oh, Kathy, good. Yes, the cactus will happen at some point. But today we're going to do the coconut trees uh, and do the silhouette style of things. Okay, awesome. Let's, let's begin. I am going to start mixing some colors. Actually, before I start mixing the colors, let me just tell you which colors we're going to be using. Now, um, I really like the idea of using uh, carmine in the sky along with some purples, but also having a light blue to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a nice little blend of Carmine, going into ruby-ish, and then going into golden deep, so it looks like a sunset. And then we can have that little sun in the background. And then for, obviously, for our coconut trees, we're going to go with black. Or if you guys want to use, like, a really intense mixture of, like, a dark purple or indigo, you are welcome to use that as well. I find using darker colors... Uh, darker versions of actual colors as opposed to black is somehow nicer. I'll leave that up to you guys so you decide. And uh, yeah, let's go. Now I probably should tape my sheet down, but I have not had the chance to do it and I cannot seem to locate my, my masking tape at this moment, so I will not be taping it down. What I will be doing is I'll be dampening the area just in between here, not going all the way to the edges because I really like the idea of having rough edges to the side of my, uh, my artwork. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's get some color handy using the number 10. And I'll use my quill to dampen the area. But if you don't have a quill, you, you plan to just use the one brush. I would use the 10 to mix your color first, dampen the sheet, and then use um, some of the mixed color you've, you've activated to get in some nice sky skies happening, okay? So here we go. Let's get some of that carmine. Brushing it around on the color cake just to activate that nicely, get some nice color going. Making sure my brush has enough water on it. And then going onto my palette and just mixing that around. And then rubbing my brush against the side to really get out all that color that is on my brush. Because the number 10s hold quite a bit of color. It is a, a bigger brush in comparison to the 6 or the 4 or the 2, which are used mainly for smaller details. I'm going to get more color because I want to make sure that I got a good enough amount. Uh, then what did we say? We said we we're using some purpley pinks, right? 
So without washing off any of the color, I've just dipped my brush in water. I'm just going to brush that on here. And now I'm going and getting some violet. And I'm mixing that on here. Now the violet is extremely dark, as you can see. You cannot even see the carmine that we previously mixed. And so um, I'm going to get a little bit more of the color carmine and mix it into the violet we just put in here. There we go. So now we've got like this nice wineish purple happening. Just tones it down from that intense purple that we initially had. And again, I'm brushing across so I've got, I'm taking off all the color, making sure it's just hanging out here. And now I'm going to wash my brush. And let's get some of the um, golden. So my golden is right here. Again, just going back and forth, back and forth to activate the color. Mixing it onto my palette. Brushing against the side to really make sure all the color is coming off. Dipping the tip of my brush in water again to really, I guess, liquidate the color that I have on here. So we've got a nice lighter version of the orange and a lot of it. Perfect. So now we've got these three colors for our sky. What I think I'm going to do is, I, I did mention I'll have a little bit of the ruby. And I think I'll have the ruby transitioning from the carmine into the um, the golden, but instead of mixing it onto my palette, I'm just gonna get it directly from the color cake when it is time, and we will go from there. So now my brush is clean again, and we are off to the races. Okay, so using the quill, as I mentioned, I'm going to dampen my area first. So just getting some water. I'm going to go ahead and just brush some water on here. Now what I want to do is make sure that I've dampened at least the top half of our sheet. Okay, at least the top half. Nicely. Then we're taking the number 10, and I'm going to start off with doing the violet. And I'm just going to start from the top and kind of from the top side, and then from the top, either of the sides. And then I'm going to intensify the color more. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm doing some lighter little strokes around here. Now we'll get the carmine. And I want the carmine to sort of start blending in a little bit, so I'm adding a couple of strokes here and there into the top and the bottom. Now what we also want to do is create shapes of the to indicate maybe a little bit of cloud happening. So all I'm doing is just going around at the top and just really pressing down my brush and creating this very loose sort of rendition of a cloud. And then we're just gonna add some more strokes of this carmine into our paper, onto our paper. Love seeing the blend of color happening in there. I'm going to get a little bit of that purple and just add a couple more strokes in here so we get a nice intensity. And just like judge a little bit of this to the side here. We add a little bit in between the carmine section. We want the top to be the darkest. 
we do not want to lose any of our white space. So try and leave the white space as best as you can. Try and get a beautiful blend in between the pinks and the purple mauves that we have. And then get a little bit of that purple in here, just like lightly stroking using just the tip of your brush. Get some waves in the sky. Oh my gosh, guys, I forgot my little circle for the moon. Okay, let's try and see if this is going to work. So I've washed off all the color from my brush. And what I'm going to do is try and swipe color off. So I think I'll do my moon in the area where it's the whitest. So let's try. Let's try this area here. And I'm just, what I'm doing is just trying to create like a circle. Maybe this is the wrong area to create this because it's so, there's so much white space around it. Probably should have done it over there. Okay, let me try and do it here. Let's see. We are experimenting as per usual. I'm really just like trying to create this rough circle. Might not work. That's okay. We've tried. No, I think it's working, guys. So I'm just dabbing on my paper towel as I am taking color off. Perfect. I think that works really well. Okay, now let's move on to doing the lower half. Is This is where it's going to transition off into the golden. And we'll have ribbons of the ruby in it, most likely. So again, using my quill, I'm going to go ahead and start dampening this part. Here. Getting a little bit of that carmine activated as well. And we're going about halfway down, then getting the golden, and go in, adding, just using the tip of my brush, adding some of those strokes into the carmine area, and then really using the full span length of my brush, I'm just sort of adding color to this whole area here. Now this is the time you want to add some of that um, ruby. Let's add some ruby. But let me just make sure this is all properly dampened down before we do the ruby. So I'm going to get some ruby directly onto my just add it in and then allow it to sort of blend in with the with the golden what I'm doing is what I did above pressing down and just kind of creating bigger shapes so that there's a nicer blend happening notice the sort of white space that's happening in there too Get a little bit of that carmine in there as well. Why not? Because now is the time we can get some beautiful blends, right? And even mix a little bit into that golden. And then just get like maybe one all the way down this way. And then I'll just get the rest of this golden and just complete this area. And then just getting washing out most of the color just with water, just blending the bottom. Okay. 
Uh, again, at this point, if you want to add a little extra color to really intensify the background, you can. Um, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit more of that ruby just in these areas here. I want to kind of nicely have some nice intense pops of color. Because the thing is, like when you're starting out in watercolor, and most of you guys know this, the, the most important thing to do is to get well versed in color mixing, um, your brush strokes, everything really, um, when it comes to, which, which are the key factors in actually learning watercolor. And so when you do something like this, which involves the sky and you're taking different colors and you've got that flexibility of having beautiful colors in your work, which is typically, I think, in my opinion, the beauty of art, um, you're allowing yourself to experiment and you're learning as you go along. So what I'm doing here is I got a little bit of the carmine and I'm just sort of adding it in between and it's working quite nicely because, and here's the key, because my paper is still damp and so I'm able to get this nice sort of cauliflower blending going on and I'm just using the tip of my brush and going very lightly across these areas and just getting some nice added hues in there. Now, if you really like intense colors, you can absolutely go and get a darker version of these colors and just really go for it. Um, I'm keeping it fairly light or medium, not really light, and we're going with that. Okay, so now that we've done this, we need to allow this to dry just a little bit before we can go in and add our mountains because we're going to do some faint mountains in the back and then we're going to do the we're going to do the coconut tea. Actually, I'm just thinking in hindsight because we've got some pretty intense color happening here and around there, I think it'll be better if we just sort of do we go right into the coconut trees and then do a couple of birds off into the sky and I think that would be pretty. Yeah, so let's do that instead because we've got the darker, wasn't kind of went with the flow there and I wasn't really compensating for the mountains. So we'll do that. And I'm just sort of trying to blend this in a tad better. So let's allow this to dry just a little bit. Um, yes, in the meantime, looking at this, because this is what we're sort of trying to mimic. So once it is dry, we're going in with our number 10. And we're going to be mixing some of the black or indigo, whatever your preference is really, or dark purple. And we're going to go ahead and do thin lines using just the tip of our brush. And so if you've got a sheet right now, as you're waiting for this to dry, just take your brush and just practice, practice light strokes. Let me see if I've got a rough sheet on here so I can show you what I mean. And I found a sheet. Okay, so let's mix some black. Let's put that, leave that there for now. Where's the black? I'm using black. And you know what? Let's put this aside for now to dry. And I'm going to put this here so you can see what we're sort of aiming for. And again, if you want to use, I like to have more stability by putting my wrist 
down when I am sort of creating strokes like that. But I've seen a lot of artists kind of just go, Oof. you can try that if you want. Um, but I would prefer to sort of have more. So I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm using just the tip and I'm lightly grazing across. And then I'm going to do that and then really press down to get a nice thick. sort of uh, bark and then as you can see as you use your as you use like your span the span of your brush to go across you'll notice you're getting dark you're getting the darkest color where you started and as you go down it gets lighter and that's obviously because if you really think about it it is because as you go down the color is getting lesser because you're using most of it um, you can either choose to go in and intensify the color and make it a lot darker just to kind of really mimic those silhouettes, in which case this is what I'm doing, just going in and adding more color, get that nice rich black, or you can do this. So let's do this again, getting some black, and this time Let's do it kind of straight, because this one is this way. Actually, no, let's do it straight this way here. Going all the way down, dipping the tip of my brush in water, and then doing that second stroke to kind of really get a thick stump for a coconut tree. And the beauty about coconut trees is it's not even, so you don't have to have like this even line. And I'll get a little bit more color in here, starting from this edge, the left edge. So it looks like it's going from light to darkish, sort of. Now what you can do is you can add a little bit of detail, just get a little bit more color, and then just add these little lines across. It doesn't have to be all the way consistent throughout. But just like a hint of them, because if you've ever really looked at the coconut tree, they've got that texture or that pattern to it. You can also do it on the, the darker version too. It really depends on how dark you've gone with your, with your colors. But you don't need to, okay? You can totally leave it simplistic and leave it that way. You don't need to. This is just exploring options. Now for the actual coconut leaves, here again, we're using the tip of our brush and we want loose strokes. We're not looking for perfection, we're looking for loose. Now the top of it, what I like to do is do something like this, give it that, make it look like there's, there's like a bunch of coconuts happening. And then from there, we're doing the we're doing the leaves. So swoop, and then making sure you've you've got nice and damp tip of your brush. The tip of your brush is nice and damp. That's what I'm trying to say. And you're just kind of zigzagging all the way across. Now these are meant to look like they are in the wind and they're blowing, or you know. They're in disarray, beautiful, healthy coconut trees. So you just do your little stem and then paint these in. And then um, do at least like five, I would say. You get the gist, right? So again, you're practicing right now using the tip of your brush and just getting these loosey strokes in. And then towards where you've got the coconuts or the middle of the tree, just kind of add more of these strokes so it looks fuller. And then 
some there too. I'm just going to finish this coconut tree before we kind of move on to the main painting because why not do your rough one before you do it on the actual sheet of paper. Now I'm doing my strokes from the outside in. You can also do it from the actual stem out. I'll leave that up to you. But loose and fun and easy and satisfying. You can go over your strokes with a darker color and then this way you get that nice two-tone effect, which I love. And you hear me repeating about it over and over again in pretty much all my videos. So again, get those nice thin strokes in. Learn to use the flick of your wrist to sort of get these beautiful strokes in there that really creates some nice thicks and thins, uneven thicks and thins, and then enhances the quality of your coconut tree. You're not overthinking this. You're not trying to be perfect. You're not trying to be... Um, Photographic perfection. We're not trying to achieve that here. We're just trying to get some nice loose coconut trees to sort of blend in with our background. So that's the approach. Let's just check to see if our stuff is finally dried up. Sort of is. So let's proceed. I'm going to move this aside. And right after we do the coconut trees, we're going to do um, a couple of birds. So let's just make sure we get to the birds at some point. All right. So getting some nice color on my brush, mixing it onto my palette. We're going to go ahead and get some coconut trees. Now, mind you, you can do super thin ones like the ones I did here, or the ones that I did over here are a little more thicker. So I'll leave that up to you guys. But make sure you're going thin at the top, thick at the bottom. This is a little too close to the same thickness down below, but just make sure you're doing that very intentionally. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's do this. So I will do, because I got the moon here, I think I'll do my coconut trees on this side. And I'll do one kind of, I'll do one towards the edge here. So here, let's do this. It's a little bit damp. So I'm trying to rest my hand here. Getting our little top there. There we go. And now we're painting this in. Gorgeous. So I'm just going to do a little bit of edging on this side. Perfect. Now we're going to get some darker, more color. Sorry, where's that black? And we're going to start doing the coconuts. Okay. 
Okay, so. I'm going to start it over here. I'm just going to draw these rough looking circles in. And I'm going to overlap a little bit of the top here. You don't need to leave white space in between these, so you can feel free to just sort of paint those in. It is a silhouette after all, so... Mm. Something like that. And then getting the tip. I'm going to rotate this so it's easier for me to paint on. I want to have, I deliberately added this to the end here so I can get a little bit of the coconut um, tree on the outside. And just like we practiced using the flick of your wrist to get these nice thicks and thins on our coconut leaf. Okay, so there's one. Move this over a bit, get some more black. And then we'll do Another one down this way. Just the tip of my brush again to get these thick and thins. You can have a little bit of overlapping because why not, right? Some nice dry strokes in there as well. Add some nice texture. Here. Notice more dry texture happening. Beautiful. Love it. The more I do these, the looser I'm getting, and I'm liking my leaves a lot more. So you loosen up a bit more if you practice, maybe just a tad bit before going ahead and creating your stuff. Okay, let's do one more. We've got three, four. Let's do five. And then we are done this tree. Fabulous. Okay, so let's do another tree and then we are done. Oh wait, the birds. Gotta do the birds first too. Then we are done after the birds. So let's get a little bit more black. Mix that up nicely. Fairly close to this one, but on a shorter scale, shorter. Pressing down my brush to fill up that whole space with color. Evening out the bottom. We're going to go ahead and do our little coconuts. 
this in here. Again, I'm going to try and do this on a smaller scale, overlapping the top as well, because I didn't want it to be this tall. This time I'll leave a little bit of white space in there. Let's just see what that looks like. Getting more black, so we've got a nice intense black. And here we go. This side. Seems to be a little bit extra long. I was trying to overlap that, but that's okay. Um, let's do one this way. That's the thing about doing um, a stroke from outside in. Sometimes if you press too hard, you'll get a thicker uh, start. So this is where an exercise like this also kind of helps you control your brush better. I'm just going to do a small thin one here, just so it doesn't look like one big mishmash. I'm going to leave it that way. I'm just adding some vertical, sorry, horizontal strokes to my coconut tree. Although, again, silhouette, so honestly, it doesn't quite matter. So you can't really see them anyways, but I'm just adding that for me. All right. So now the next thing I want to do, because I really like how it kind of looks like it's just extending from the sky, but if you guys don't like how it looks like it's just kind of starting, because sometimes you can take a, a, a shot of just, you're not getting the bottom of the tree, you're just kind of getting it midway and then the sky, um, you can go in and just add a little bit of a black sort of line and kind of give it some some uh, detailing at the edges that make it look like there's maybe some mountains in the back or maybe some greenery at the bottom again using all black and I don't think I have a reference image for what I mean oh actually hold on in the cactus one we do so something like that obviously the cactus is smaller ish than the coconut trees so something like that if you want to um, I'm going to leave this as is and I'll just do the little birds and so for the birds again we're using just the tip of the brush and let's practice a couple of birds before we actually put them down so I'm going to put this aside and so for the birds we want to do something like using the tip of your brush like a comma stroke and then pressing down and doing something like that there we go there's a little bit of, yeah, so again, to show you, because I was a little bit blurry doing this, and then doing something like that. So the second stroke is thicker. And then you could also do, do it in different directions or angles, sorry. So something like that, 
and then maybe just make it slightly thicker in the beginning for one side you know and some kind of off in the distance to indicate distance just super thin and smaller so you've got different variations happening okay all right so let's go back and do the birds so getting some color i'm going to oh i need to change my battery hold on guys Almost there. All right, we're back. Okay, so we've got our moon over there. Let's do the birds off into the distance here. Again, using the tip of my brush, I'm kind of doing what I showed you there. There's one. Let's do another one kind of halfway there. Another one there, and then we did the let's make this one like slightly thicker on this side here. We've got three. I think I'll leave it at three. That's good enough. And then wash up the brush. And that is it. Now, one thing to sort of highlight that moon if you want to, I think it would be nice to try and see if we can get a little bit of an additional shadow-ish sort of thing around it. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the purple. Should I get the purple? Yes. Mixing purple with a little bit of the carmine. And very lightly, I'm going to see if I can get something like this around it. But then taking the brush again and washing off the color with just water on it and see if I can smoothen this out and then so that it doesn't dry off weird I'm just going to dab the excess edges and leave it that way all right, and that's that, guys. Here we have our very simplistic, fun background sky with coconut trees. Um, this is what we're going to be doing this afternoon, having fun mixing colors and such. Let me see comments. Anyone have any questions or any comments? No, no. Wow, okay. All right, well, I think that's it. If no one has any questions or anything, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hit the like button if you liked it. Let me know if you guys want to see my um, paintings that I do at the vineyard and do it as a session like this. It just came as a, as a thought to me. And, you know, while in-person is fabulous, having a reference like this to sort of go to is also nice so I figured let's try this out and see what people think um, and again sometimes it's always nice to go back to basics and kind of do the very basic things 
I will definitely be filling up those coconuts because I don't like the the white spacing there. I feel like it's too weird. But yeah, that is it. Well, thank you. Thanks, Pamela. I'm glad that was fun for you guys. So I hope you guys go have a lovely Sunday and uh, check out my stories on Instagram. I will definitely be posting what we are doing or what's happening in the vineyard. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye.